Speaker, we are met here to lay the foundation stone of the new Commons Chamber. Most of us here will remember vividly that night when our old house was destroyed. We recall our emotion when we saw the chamber which held for us so many memories in ruins. The wartime House of Commons continued to meet throughout the war, undismayed by bomb or rocket. But, sir, in whatever chamber it met, the arrangements of its chair, its table, and its seats preserved the pattern of its original. The new chamber, which is now arising, will, by the wise decision of the wartime parliament, reproduce the features of its predecessor, for its form has had no small effect on the development of our parliamentary system. It will, I know, be the hope of all of us that this new chamber will remain through the years that lie ahead, unscarred by wars, unchanged in essentials, the place wherein free British men and women, freely elected, speak fearlessly and seek to serve the common weal. Mr. Speaker, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> I gladly associate myself with what uh, the Prime Minister has uh, so well said about the former chamber and um, I feel that uh, we owe him uh, a debt uh, and his colleagues a debt for having adhered, in spite of some temptations to the contrary, uh, to the form of the chamber which we agreed to in the wartime government. I am quite sure that in this way uh, a greater continuity will be maintained in our parliamentary institutions. No one can easily say what was the great age of Parliament, but the Victorian era, with uh, its great figures of debate, like Mr. Gladstone and uh, uh, Mr. Disraeli, uh, uh, this era, which to us may well be regarded as what the age of the Antonines was in the history of ancient Rome, may always claim uh, to uh, uh, hold its own in B British history as a great parliamentary period in which the uh, ideas of constitutional parliamentary government which we had evolved in this island spread widely not only throughout the British Commonwealth but into many other countries where in different degrees they still in many cases flourish. I uh, personally look forward very much to the completion of this chamber. I hope the laying of the foundation stone will cause no break in the uh, no relaxation of the efforts to complete it. Uh, for I am quite sure that it will be with the feelings of the keenest satisfaction that all members who sat in the former chamber uh, will find themselves back again in surroundings which although less uh, magnificent, will be more familiar. <laughs> I uh, feel uh, a great uh, cordiality of agreement with the Prime Minister to uh, support and sustain uh, a fa fabric which, however events may go, however our fortunes may go, will still preserve the rights and privileges of free debate and uh, permit the development of our national life uh, under the guidance of um, an institution which all the world recognizes as one of the great features of the modern civilized world. Mr. Speaker, sir, it was a most pleasant surprise 
when you suggested to me some time ago that I should say a word of introduction and ask you to lay the foundation stone. I do so hope the new chamber will prove to be a worthy habitation for the oldest and as we believe the finest and greatest legislative assembly in the world. Mr. Speaker, sir, will you now perform the ceremony? In complying with that request, I should like to tell you that the mallet which I am about to use in laying the stone is one of the mallets which was used a hundred years ago when the Palace of Westminster was built. And the trial will be... of the Father's glory and the express image of his person through whom all things were created and made, the one foundation and the chief cornerstone. Bless, we beseech thee, this stone which is laid in thy name, and be thou to us the beginning, the increase, and the consummation of this our work, which is undertaken to the praise and glory of thy holy name, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit livest and reignest one God, world without end. Amen. Lord, bless this realm, that religion and virtue may season all sorts of men, that there may be Jesus Christ.